All right. Facebook, you are welcome. AJ Sule, you're welcome. Uh, Periscope, you're welcome. Please share as you come on in. We're in good business, and to God be all the glory, and God's people said amen as it were. Okay, thank you. I'm back. I'm on Facebook. Good evening to you, Sule. <laughs> Pastor Doris, you're welcome. Good evening, good evening, good evening. J. Rodney Cam, you're welcome. Uh, Joy, you're welcome. Joy, you're welcome again. For Lake, you're welcome. We're talking about divine leading. Tinuke, you're welcome. Divine direction, Pastor Joseph, you are welcome. Divine direction. And our core text is out of uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 14. Romans 8, 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Divine leadership, very important in the Christian life. Welcome, welcome, welcome to our family. Command your fa dig family, Glory House family, new friends and family. You are so welcome. As many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Divine leadership, very, very important for Christians and for life. The Lord is my shepherd. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He leadeth me. If only God opened your understanding to see what you and I have missed or the blunders or the mistakes, Deborah, you're welcome, or the things we have missed or, you know, by not taking true divine direction, it will shock you and I. Who knows what we've missed? Who knows what we've lost? Thank you, Esther. Who knows what you and I have lost when God doesn't lead, the first thing that happens is that mistakes do occur. Mistakes do occur. Number two, when God doesn't lead, wrong destinations are arrived at. We arrive at wrong destinations. You must, Pastor Martin, you're welcome. You must desire to be led by God. There's nothing, one of the most important things that can happen to a Christian is to be led by God. Richard Carvello, five, you're welcome today. I command your day. But David Hodges, you're welcome. You must desire to be led in leading, in guiding you. It's your right as a child, born again child of God, to be led by God, by his spirit primarily. For as many as are led by the spirit, by the spirit of God, you must desire to be led by God. You must hunger and thirst for divine leading. Number three, when God is not leading Efforts are wasted. When God is not leading, efforts are wasted. Number four, when God is not leading, tr failure occurs. You, go, you take the wrong turn and end up in a failure. Number five, when God is not leading, Resources are wasted, wasted resources, wasted time, wasted resources, wasted money, wasted efforts, wasted investments when God is not leading. When God is not leading, resources are wasted. Thank you, Tashi. Thank you, Kenneth Esther, for sharing. When God is not leading, a lot of wasted wastage occurred. Number seven, 
when God is not leading, tragedy becomes the order of the day. Number one, when God is not leading, mistakes occur. Kamalita, you're welcome. Number two, when God is not leading, leading wrong destinations. Number three, when God is not leading, wasted efforts. Number four, when God is not leading, failure occurs. Number five, when God is not leading, wasted efforts occur. Hello, Esther. Welcome, welcome today. And number six, when God is not leading you, tragedy can occur. Tragedy can occur. Acts, uh, Acts 16 uh, let's read Deuteronomy 32, verse 10. Deuteronomy 32, verse 10. You're welcome there. He found him in a desert land and in the waste howling wilderness. He led him about. He led him about. He led him about. He instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. He led him about. The steps of the righteous are ordered of the Lord. He led him about. He led him about. One step at a time. For you will hear a voice behind you telling you which way to go. If you are interested in listening to that voice, Ricky, you're welcome. Many of us have made wrong decisions wrong choices, wasted money, wasted time, wasted tears because we took the wrong turn. Now, let me quickly say, when you ask God to lead you, Divine 325, you're welcome on Periscope. When you ask God to lead you and you don't hear clearly what to do, don't go. Divine silence means do not go. <laughs> this is so tricky. When God is silent and you're asking, Father, should I go left? Should I marry this person? Should I invest? Should I go here? Should I apply for that job? Is this person real? Uh, should I do this? Should I invest money? Should I buy this? Should I go here? Should I do this and that? And you do not hear clearly. When God is silent, it means wait. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. When God is silent, it means wait. Please write it, somebody. Help us, my scribes. For those watching and driving and cooking or laying in bed or what have you, fixing their hair, what have you. When God is silent, do not go. When God is silent, don't put your signature there. When God is silent, wait for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Wait. In Acts chapter 10, verse 19, Acts 10, 19, Peter got a vision, but he did not know what to do with it. While Peter, Acts chapter 10, verse 19, hello, Jennifer, you're welcome. While Peter was thinking on that thing, then the Spirit said unto him, behold, three men looked. You've got to wait, Curly, you're so welcome. Wait. When God is silent, wait. I wish I could scream it from the rooftop. When God is silent, do not go. Do not move. But we don't hear. When God is silent, we assume that that means a yes. How many of you watching, listening, have assumed that God's silence means God's approval. God is silent. Wait. It's not time yet. When it's time, he will let you know. When God is silent, you've got to wait. It's not time to move yet. Uh -huh. Somebody says, they have. I have too. I just assume that his silence 
meant go. Judith, you're welcome. No, his silence does not mean go. When God is silent, wait. And Mika says she has. No. Should I go left? Should I go right? To Mika say yes too. Do not go. Do not go. I don't know who this word is for. One day I was to travel, I think my wife and I, okay, somebody says many times, my wife and I were to travel to Minnesota um, for a program. Did you ever your welcome? I just did not feel right about it. And so I, I couldn't tell the pastor in Minnesota that I wasn't coming. You're welcome. So I, ah, I prayed and prayed. Something wasn't right. Something wasn't right. When you don't feel right in your heart, in your spirit, don't take that decision. Please write it on the screen for somebody to see it. When it does not feel right, when you're not comfortable with it, do not go. I'm telling you, don't go. I didn't feel, Tabeta, you're welcome. I didn't feel right, but I had to go. Last minute, I prayed. I said, Father, if this is not of you, let something happen. Let the flight not take off from Atlanta. When it does not feel right, do not go. Don't do it. But we are pressured. Now, hear me. We are pressured, and we want to please the people, so they will not call us names. Professor Mount, you welcome. And feel disappointed. We feel that we owe them to please them, to rise up to the occasion and be nice and so on. And then you walk into the lion's den. I pray for anybody who has taken the wrong turn or made the wrong decision, that God Almighty will deliver you today. Who knows where you and I could have been in the name of Jesus. I just prayed. I said, Father, if that flight, if something would happen in the air, don't let the flight take off. Well, we got to the Atlanta airport, my wife and I, Okay, Jennifer, you're the one I'm talking to? Okay, praise the Lord. We boarded. It was an American air flight. <laughs> yes, sir, thank you. And guess what? Suddenly the pilot came up and said, uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is the, your captain speaking. Something is wrong with this aircraft. We cannot fly it. We were to fly to Chicago and connect to uh, Minnesota and uh, to Rochester, Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota, not uh, the Twin City, not St. Paul, no, Rochester, Minnesota, to go do ministry, preach at a church there. We said, Lord, and so the pilot said, the, the flight, the, something was wrong with the plane and the plane could not go and that we all had to get off the plane and wait for another airplane to board. So they pushed out that plane that had a problem and they pushed in. Thank you, Glenn. This is summer, Dr. Glenn. So you have to wear a summer shirt. <laughs> oh, it's a summer, it's summer here, amen. Enjoy summer, Dr. Glenn. Enjoy your summer, okay. Praise the Lord. And so we, he's in Kentucky. So enjoy your summer. Don't complain about no snow. Okay. My wife likes it. She got it. So I like it. Praise the Lord. And so we changed planes and then flew to Chicago and uh, flew to Minnesota, Rochester, Minnesota. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Glenn. So Remember two things we've established. When God is silent, don't go. God's silence means no. Wait. 
Number two, when you don't feel right, do not go. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Now, uh, because of time, I wish I had enough time. Um, um, let's go to, let me share some of the, Pastor Fred, you're welcome today. Yay, Pastor Fred is watching. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Where you are, when there are some things I have noticed that indicate God's direction. Number one, when there is a resistance in your spirit, when you're trying to do something, you go this way, it's not working. You go this way, it's not working. Many of us assume that is a satanic resistance or witchcraft or a demon spirit or a devil resisting us. No. When there's a resistance in your spirit, slow down and ask the Lord what's going on. Very important. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. Number two, when you are not sure, thank you, sir. Thank you, Pastor Fred. When you are not sure, you are not sure, should I marry uh, Jane? Should I marry, uh, I don't want to say Esther. Esther is watching. <laughs> You've got to be careful. You've got to wait, 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 wait. When you feel that resistance, you've got to discern if this is God resisting you. Number two, when you are not sure. There was a man called Paul. The Lord spoke to him. The Holy Spirit speak to, speak to him. Do not go to Jerusalem. Don't go there. He said he was going to go. The Lord spoke to him. He told his people. He said many, many troubles await him in Jerusalem. Awaiting, awaiting him. God said, do not go. And he went. God sent a prophet called Agabus to prophesy. Thus said the Lord, the man that owns his belt is going to be in trouble. Paul still did not listen. Acts chapter 21, Acts 21, verse 10. Acts 21, verse 10. And as we tarried there many days, there came down from Judea a certain prophet named Agabus. And when he was come unto us, he took Paul's girdle or belt and bound his own hands and feet and said, Thus saith the Holy Ghost, so shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man that owneth this girdle and shall deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Do you think that Paul answered? He said, he will not, he will go. He would go. So they said, okay, let the will of God be done. He said, even Paul himself said, the spirit witnessed, witnessed to him. Of course, his job was to go to the Gentiles. That was his calling. What was he going in Judea, in Jerusalem to go do? So it's not the leading of the Holy Spirit that is important, but the yielding to it, the surrendering to it. The main way God leads his children is by the Holy Ghost. For as many as are led by the Spirit, the leadership of the Holy Spirit in the born again heart or spirit, those who are not born again may not necessarily 
have a right to be led by God. God can guide them through incidents, coincidences, events, nature, and so on. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Holy Ghost. He still wouldn't listen. He was warned. He was told. He still went ahead. So there are many of us also that have been told, I made those mistakes, I don't know about you. God said, do not do this, do not that, and I went ahead because I felt that I would. And one of the reasons why we miss God is that we insist on pleasing somebody. So you've got to, and you pay dearly for it. You pay dearly for it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Glory, I can tell you so many. One day, I, 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 I yes, ma'am, Esther, I woke up one day on a Wednesday. I, 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 I didn't feel right. I didn't feel right. Now, let me say this before I share this testimony. You've got to grow in it. You've got to grow in divine leadership. You've got to grow in it. It takes time to grow and mature. Let me give you an example. One day in the morning, uh, I asked my wife to give me breakfast. I don't eat breakfast naturally. I'm not a breakfast person. Jennifer, you're welcome. But I said, oh, today I'm going to eat breakfast. Okay. She fixed the big breakfast. Boy, and I heard. Do not eat yet. You're going to fast today. I said, oh, every day fasting, fasting. Am I the only pastor? Everybody is always eating. Look at how big they are and how huge they are. They have good tummies. <laughs> oh, not today. I'm going to eat good. I mean, today, no fasting. And I heard the Lord said, don't eat yet. Well, I'm going to eat now to every day. Must I be fasting every day, every day? All these other pastors, do they fast? Am I the only pastor in this town? I'm just grumbling. Okay. And I went, oh my goodness, from cereal to eggs to all fruits to these to the man, boy. Oh, pancakes and oh, yummy stuff. Let me start because somebody may be fasting. My wife went upstairs. Boy, did I have a feast. Man, it, it was as if it was my first time eating breakfast. I was done. I was humming, feeling good. And suddenly, it was as if a hand was stuck down, you know where, my throat. <laughs> I ran to the bathroom. Boy, in one Less than 30 seconds. Water was coming out of my ears, my eyes. <laughs> All the food came out. Excuse me, for, forgive me for being that detailed. And then in between, you know, the process, I was saying, God, please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. I will fast. I will fast. Forgive me. <laughs> Finally, lad, to your welcome. Boy, by the time I screamed for help, my wife ran there and found me sweating. Every drop of that meal came out. Why? I was led, but I disobeyed, so I paid for it. Now, do not look at me funny. You also have disobeyed. Some of you, you paid dearly for it. So let's all ask for God's mercy that from now on, we will hear and obey. Okay? In the name of Jesus, say amen if you agree. God will speak to us. We we'll speak. Sometimes, another way, it could be a nudge. Okay? I see many of you saying, it could be a nudge. You're feeling, mm, I should go right and nudge. Get up and pray. Get up and pray. Oh, I just went to bed. Get up and pray and nudge. Pray now. I, I had another example. One Wednesday morning, I just came out and uh, I just felt ah, not right. Told my wife, 
I'm going back in to pray. I prayed some more. Came out. I said, ah, oh, I don't feel right. I went back again. Prayed some more. Again, I felt, oh, I'm tired. I'm just praying. I, I, I feel that I've prayed through. I came out again. Mm, not right. I went back again. All day. Praying for just based on a nudge to pray. A nudge to pray. Listen now. A nudge to pray will save you a lot of trouble. When you failed, uh, it could be in the car, in the plane, in the, on the train, uh, on your treadmill. When you feel that nudge to pray, just, I don't care if it's a long prayer or a short prayer, Elizabeth, you must Say, begin to pray. Rambro cafe sembre che te labrado vovonime che se pracavere di bella nome schepre dia. Thank God that by the language of the Holy Ghost, we can pray at any time. You can be laying in your bed. Ma su prefendra palakoski predia. Hallelujah. And guess what? It was time to go for Bible study midweek service. And I got dressed and uh, we drove off, my wife and I. Long story short, <laughs> little rain, middle of the road, suddenly on the highway, our car began to spin in the middle of the road. We hit somebody going on a journey with his wife for a dinner. God saved us, saved that man. No trouble, no disaster. His car, okay, our car, okay. People are waiting for us at church singing, and we escaped by the nudging and leading of the Holy Ghost. And to God be the glory in the name of Jesus. Somebody give God a big hand clap for that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. By the time we got to church, they had sang and sang and sang. We had a glorious service and drove home. That night, a satanic agent, uh, somebody we knew who was who swore to destroy me. At that, in that same night, they heard him scream in his bed in his village. And they ran to his bedroom and they heard an explosion and his chest exploded. His chest exploded as if somebody threw a, a bomb into his chest. It was so bad that by 9 a.m., they said they didn't want the whole town to see that. By 9, they buried him shamefully, disastrously, remorsefully, disgracefully, because any weapon fashioned against you and I, will go back to sender in the name of Jesus. My wife and I were saved and preserved because of a nudge to pray that somebody obey. And I thank God for giving me the grace to receive, to hear, and obey. What if I had a flight to catch or, you know, some money to go, anything what if I, you or you and I, you're working at the bank or stock exchange or you be, I mean, it could be a job in anything. So thank God, thank God, thank God. I pray that God will teach us more and more to listen to that nudge and obey. Listen to, go pray. Yeah, but I'm at work. What would they say? Go pray. And if it's for one minute, no. But they would think I'm too. I'm too. I'm too. Too spiritual. See, we begin to think we want to please everybody else and not please the Lord. May God have mercy on us in the name of Jesus. How about divine not divine pushes? The Holy Spirit will push you gently. Say yes. Say no. Say, so let me think about it. No, no, we won't listen. <laughs> Divine pushes. Holy Ghost will say, say nothing. 
Just hush. How many of us have opened up our mouths to speak and we got into trouble because we refused to listen to when God pushed us to speak or pushed us not to speak. You're driving, he pushes you, go left. Oh, no, but I always go right. Go left. But I always go right. Go left. One day, we were driving, a friend of mine and my wife, I suddenly heard the sound of uh, an ambulance. And I said, I heard it. I said to him, did you hear? No, I asked. Nobody heard, but I heard. Woo! Woo! Ambulance. I said, what, Lord, what are you saying? Tell him to slow down. I said to him, you was driving. I said, slow down, slow down. We slowed down. Another car overtook us. A few miles down the road, accident. By the time we got there, there were police cars and that ambulance. And God preserved us by speaking and by giving us the grace to hear and to hearken. That gentle push. It may be another gentle push. Maybe another way is a, a direction directing us, leading us, directing us, <laughs> directing us, divine direction, leading you. Many people now lie, many Christians lie and say, I was led. You were, you were, you know you were not led. Well, you were led by your flesh. Well, God told me to do that. God, told, God didn't tell you. We, we just do, it's just a Pentecostal lie. It's just Pentecostal lie, Christian lie. Because if you're really directed by God, God will order your steps, when to speak, where to speak, how to speak. And God led me. Who was it that lied to me the other day? It was yesterday I was talking with somebody. <laughs> he said God led him. <laughs> A friend of mine, he said God led him to send money to this person. God led him to send money to this person. I say, how about me? God didn't lead you? <laughs> how come God didn't lead you to send me money? He say, well, no, God led me to send this person. And it, yeah, I, so God doesn't like me? <laughs> how come when he got to me, God didn't lead you? It's just, uh, just Christianity. Oh, God, have mercy. Directions. Amen. Directions. Sometime, the next one, you're welcome, mercy reigning. Divine openings. Divine openings, divine closings. Divine openings, divine closings. You must be able to buy the spirit, not by the flesh, not by your strength. Ryan, you're welcome. You must, be, be, you must discern when God is opening a door and when God is closing a door. You must discern. Should I go through? David knew it, 1 Samuel 30. David was so sensitive, he would always seek for divine direction. Should I pursue? Should I overtake? Will I recover all? Are the people going to give me to Saul when King Saul was after him? David would always ask, always ask. One of the cheapest lies a Christian can tell another Christian is that, well, I was led. Yeah, right. Why did you marry that woman? Well, God led me. So how come you want to leave her now? Well, God, God is leading me to divorce my wife. You're a liar. You know you're a liar. You need deliverance. Glory be to God. Forgive me, but that's... Thank you, Lexi. Thank you. We must thank Pastor Sharon for the shirt. She dresses me good. Don't you think so? Amen. It's summertime, so hey. Thanks for sharing. Divine openings, divine closings. Thank you, Pastor. Sometimes you just feel, uh, I don't feel right. This door is open, but it's not of God. Not all open doors are of God. I want you to write it down. Not every door that is open is, is, was opened by God. It could be a trap, it could be a snare, 
It could lead to a dead end. First Samuel 30 and 8. And David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue after this truth? Shall I overtake? David would ask. David has so many prophets. I did a study of how many prophets that David had. David always had prophets around him, from Samuel to this, to that, to do, always, always. Yet, he still missed God every now and then. The difference was that David would run back to the prophet to ask for a redirection. Not all open doors are of God. And then secondly, not all closed doors are of God. Some doors uh -uh, are not opened by God. Some doors are not closed by God. Mm -mm. You've got to discern. You've got to discern. You've got to discern that, uh-uh, I don't feel right about this door. Father, is this you? Is this you? Is this you? Are you there? Is this you? You assure him that if it's not of him, that you're not going. If it's not of you, Father, I'm not going. I won't go. Oh, okay. So you want to listen to me? Okay. Not every door that is open is of God. I wish I had time to. One day, a pastor invited me. Dr. Uzo, you're welcome. One day, a pastor invited me. <laughs> Houston, Texas. <sighs> I was so happy. It's one of those churches that if they invite you, you are blessed, like Pastor Fred's church. If he invites you, you are fortunate. You, you must, you, you're really blessed. It's a wonderful church, big church. Multiple services, great place to be. Thanks, Pastor Fred. And guess what? <sighs> I got into prayer. I called the pastor. I said, Pastor, I don't feel right about this church, sir. I, I don't feel, no, I didn't say about the church. I said, this weekend you're giving me, the Lord is telling me that we should cancel this service, this weekend's program. I, I feel that the Lord is saying we should cancel. Please pray about it and let me know. Let's compare notes. Maybe I'm missing God. See, when you're willing to admit that you can miss God, then God will take over. You must guard from assuming that God is in it. Not Even if God is in it, he still wants you to Depend on him. Well, the pastor called me back and said he didn't feel anything, that he felt right, that we should go on with the services. Okay, sir. I said, sir, I don't feel right, but you're the pastor. I'll come. We set up the program. That weekend, Houston, Texas was flooded. Flooded, houses buried, people disappeared, places washed out. Boy, oh boy, that particular church flooded. You're talking of 10, 12, 15, 16 feet of water. Glory be to God. He called me back and said, Pastor Joseph, <laughs> you sure heard from God. I said, sir, well, I, I, I don't know if you're still happy with me. <laughs> He never invited me back to that church. But uh, God bless his darling heart, as Dr. Glenn would say. God bless his darling heart. Praise the Lord. Point is, when you hear from God, stick with what God told you to do. This is so critical. And as Kenneth Copeland would say, this is so critical. This is so vitally important. This is so vitally important. Stick with what you heard from God. Stick with it. Well, let's go for a ride. I don't feel, let me pray. Well, you're always praying about everything. You're always suspecting everybody. Can't you just move after God is with you? I mean, are you afraid? No, 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 no. Uh-uh. The cost of missing God is bigger than the cost of waiting on the Lord. 
the cost of missing God is far bigger than the cost of waiting on the Lord. No, don't go, Scarlet, you're welcome. Don't do it, don't do it. Sometimes God will close a door and you and I are busy fighting and fasting and kicking that door and binding the devil and get out, devil. I command this door to open. Go, devil, you're the one. No, come out. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. And... When God closes a door, you can fast and pray for 100 days. It will not open. It won't open. It's, I hope I'm helping somebody because I'm sharing this. The Lord gave me this word to share. For my sheep, hear my voice. So today I pray that all of us will hear better. And follow. It's not the hearing. And trust me, Christian people are so funny. After the disaster, then they say, Oh yeah, but yes, yes, uh, I knew it. God told me that I should join this church. Okay. Two weeks later, God told me that I should leave. But is that? No, that's not the God I serve. The God I serve is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the same yesterday, today, yesterday, tomorrow, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. He never changes. He is not emotional. He is not unstable. He is not an emotional wreck. He is not uh, irritable, agitated, easily unstable. Um, 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 just, just, just. You no, know, our God is not a God who changes his mind as he wishes because he's mad with us or he's angry with us or we didn't drink enough water. No, 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 no. He is the eternal rock of ages, the ancient of days, the everlasting father. You're welcome, Pastor Joma. Stable like a rock. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Sometimes it may be a dropping, a dropping in your heart, a dropping. It could be a dropping. Hmm. You, 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 you're, you're praying. It happens a lot in the place of prayer. You're praying about something, and God will drop something in your heart, like a thought, a certain thought, a sudden flash, and you're like, oh, that dropping is a sign that, uh-oh, move this way, you're praying uh, about your job, suddenly something drops, we call it something, it drops in your heart, and uh, you see a picture of your sister or brother or somebody, and the Lord is leading you to pray in that direction. It happens to me a lot. I believe it happens to you too. You're praying about your job or about uh, your finances or about your wife or a husband. Uh, and then something else you never thought about. Dorothy, you're welcome. Somebody you never thought about would drop in your heart. Maybe a picture, maybe an image, maybe a name. Maybe a memory, maybe a sudden flash, a thought. Of course, jump in and follow. Go with it. You lift up that person. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lift up the... Don't say, well, I don't like President Trump. I, I, I like Joe Biden. No, it doesn't matter. Whether it's Joe Biden or Trump or Hillary Clinton or Saddam Hussein or whoever, follow the leading of the Lord. Follow, always follow when that thing drops in your heart. Always follow. Father, I don't know the full story. I lift up this person before you right now in the name of Jesus. And I pray for that person with all manner of prayer and thanksgiving in the Holy Ghost. Ebranando, fece, freke, parando. Keep at it till that picture in your spirit of that person or place or something or thing or car or something lifts and melts and disappears. Then you are done. One of the ways, another way is through songs. 
please listen. Some of you, you wake up singing songs. So you're doing something. Suddenly a song will come to you. And you begin to hmm, 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 hmm. It could be a song of the Lord, meaning a song nobody has ever sung before. Listen to what you're singing. Get your phone and tape it and listen to the song. The words of the song can give you a direction. Somebody told me just before I came on, he was just worshiping. Then a, a brand new song came to him. And I said, what did you do? Listen to the words. He said the words were more into worshiping the Lord and praising him and thanking him. I say, so you change direction quickly, begin to praise, begin to worship, begin to give him glory and magnify him. It means that something awesome, something great is about to drop, is been dispatched. The UPS of heaven, the FedEx of heaven is carrying that package and heading toward you. And God is leading you to begin to praise and thank him because an answer from heaven has just come. Now we go to the eighth one talking about dreams. Oh, Lord. We can talk about dreams for the next six months. And uh, how God leads us through dreams. <laughs> Ooh, so many, so many. We studied it. A lot, and of course, you go to uh, Job uh, 33, uh, which is our main verse and uh, scripture and so on. Uh, we I don't know if we have all that time, but let me just, Job chapter 33, and we pick it up from verse um, Job 33, uh-huh. You can read it from verse um, uh, 14, Job 33, 14. And uh, we go, uh, we get to verse 30. Job 33, 14 to 30. Please put it on the screen. Somebody who can type fast. Thank you for putting it on Periscope. Somebody on Facebook. You can check it out and see how God operates through but bottom line, take your dreams seriously. Take your dreams seriously. Well, the pastor, I dreamt something. I don't, whether you understand it or not, write it down, say it into your phone, tape it, describe it, describe what you saw, record, save, go back to bed. Job 33, 14 to 30, describe Tape, write, go back to bed. When you play it back, it will shock you as to the accuracy, the precision of that dream as a way of the Lord leading you, directing you. So you go into prayer. Jeremy, you're welcome. You go into prayer. Father, I got this dream. What does this mean? What is this saying? What does this mean? How does it work? I, and so on and so forth. I'm trying not to get into it because you I get into it, we will not do anything else. Love, you're welcome. Always, I already talked, dreams. Oh my goodness. Oh Lord. Now, sometimes it could be a tension. Another way, I believe number nine, a tenseness in your spirit a heaviness in your spirit. You just wake up, you feel grieved. If somebody's writing, you don't remember your dreams, then ask the Lord to remind you of your dreams. Everybody dreams, including babies. So you have to ask him to remind you and you have to show him I know now hear this. I've never read what I'm about to say, but I've noticed that when God, when I take dreams seriously, God gives me more. When I write my dreams down, whether they make sense or not, whatever I remember, I try to write it down. 
I notice the pattern that God begins to give me clearer dreams, stronger dreams, better dreams, more sensible dreams, more comprehensible dreams. But when I wave it off and I don't, I don't know what this means, I don't know if this means, uh, Nelly, you're welcome. It begins to dry up. It begins to dry. I, I notice that I dream less uh, and they're shorter and don't make sense. It seemed to me, therefore, through more than... I've been journaling my dreams whew, for almost 30 years. Let's say 20-something years. I, I'm always writing, writing dreams, writing them. And it has helped me tremendously, tremendously. Let me give you one way, God. <laughs> one Sunday morning, I had a dream, just early Sunday morning, and I've shared it before. So when you, be, let me finish. So when you write them down or document them or save them on, in your phone or tablet or device, wherever, Whatever method you can use to guide, to save them, preserve them, you get more. So I concluded that God, who, who wants to talk to people? Would you like to talk to somebody who is not interested in what you're saying? Of course. If you wake up, oh, I don't know what that dream is. I'm always dreaming stupid dreams. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, mm, mm, mm. It's gonna get worse, <laughs> but when yeah, I've been writing my dreams down, Pastor. He, he journal for ooh, I have dream journals whew, from uh, way, 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 way from the nineties. Some I have not gone back to look at. <laughs> Some I do check them out. Amen. But I always it could be a word, a sentence. Some scene that doesn't make sense. Trust me, if you come back later to read it, it will make so much sense. And I remember I was trying to describe to you, I had this dream. In the dream was, he was a member of our church. In the dream, I was sitting in my office and he walked into my office and suggested something for us to do in the church. And I said something to him in the dream. And he turned around without saying a word again to me and walked out of my office and went back into the sanctuary. He was in a suit with a tie, white shirt, clear dream. I, don't re I didn't recall what I said to him in the dream. Went to church, got there, sitting on my, at my desk before the service. This gentleman walked into my office, said exactly what I saw him say a couple of hours earlier that same Sunday morning. And then something out of my spirit jumped out and I gave him a reply, a response right there and then that stunned him. He didn't say one word to me. He just turned around and walked out of my office. And that was the end of that conversation. Jerry Mary, you're welcome. To God be the glory. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you may have had such experiences. And um, it's if you like to obey it, I pray that God will help us. I hope I'm helping somebody. Let's begin to close. Um, how about liberty of the Spirit? For where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. 2 Corinthians 3 and 17. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Sometimes there's a, just an explosion. You just feel good. You feel right. You feel excited. You just wake up without any reason. You just feel good. You just feel good. Second Corinthians, you just feel good. You feel right. 
you feel fine. You feel excited about that job, about that interview. And you're like, yeah, you just feel it. You just know it. That job is mine. I'm going to get that car. I feel good. I feel fine. Now, the Lord is that spirit. Princess Dozy, you're welcome. And the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. You just feel good. You feel right. You feel nice. You just feel nice about somebody or something or somewhere or something. You just feel good. There are times, yeah. So it's not only gloom and doom. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of liberty. You just feel right. And you just, before they ask you, you already said yes. You feel right. You feel good. First day I met my wife, I just knew she was the one. I felt good. I felt right. I felt fine. I'm still feeling fine. 22 years later, I still feel good. I still feel right. I still feel fine. <laughs> Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Does it work with the word of God? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. The word, it cannot go against the word of God. The word must bear witness. It must line up with the word of God. 1997, a lady came to me and said, God told her to divorce her husband. I said, lady, you're missing God. She left the church. I'm like, thank you, Jesus. Does it line up with the word? God told me. God told me. God told me. Really? You sure? Yeah. Prove it by the word. Where does he say? Well, I don't know. I just feel that I, I should leave my husband. You, you, no, you know you're lying. You, you, no, just... Don't, don't, don't lie with God's name. Don't lie with God's name. Ah, I just feel I should marry this man. I should leave my husband and marry him. Huh? Hello? Yeah, you should divorce your husband. I remember <laughs> there was a prophetess. Oh, this prophetess, very powerful prophetess. Very influential. And I, I, I just didn't feel right about this prophetess. Prophetess. I didn't feel right about her. I said, Lord, there's something not right about this prophetess. But let me just be nice and be friendly and smile and hello and you be good. Yeah, something ain't right. One day, she said, that the Lord Jesus Christ is her boyfriend. Huh? <laughs> and that the Lord Jesus Christ visits her every night to be intimate with her because the Lord Jesus Christ told her that she is his bride and she should not get married to any man. Evelyn, you're welcome, Pastor. Welcome, Pastor Evelyn. I said, What? And she, she insisted she was right. Boy, I ran faster than you seen boat. <laughs> Ooh, I didn't know I could run that fast, man. I fled from my life. The Lord Jesus Christ that called me into ministry, anointed me, sent me, backed me all these years. From nobody to somebody, from nothing to something, from nowhere to somewhere. He comes to visit you at night. You what? And that he gives you mail. And you should see this woman prophesying. She would read your mail. She would tell you stuff. And whatever she said came to pass. Mm -hmm. So she wasn't a false prophet in the sense of her prophecy not coming to pass. Of course, I tried to talk to her. She wouldn't listen. Boy, did I fly away. I fly away. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Okay, somebody's writing on Facebook, a prophet took their car here in Atlanta that God told him the car was for him. <laughs> this is a pastor writing that a prophet in Atlanta took their car and lied to them that God said the car was for them. See, in Atlanta, in this town. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory be to God. Let's close. Today, I want us to pray, and please prepare your communion. We're still taking communion every day. We've been at it since March, and this is August. Every time we have command your day, we receive the communion. For those who are the first time, <laughs> get a piece of bread, crackers, and if you don't have uh, grape juice, Ribena, any red drink, not red, not red alcoholic wine. Some people have used a piece of yam, uh, water, what have you. And the best in our communion today is that the Lord himself will lead us all the way, will instruct us. When you are not sure, don't do it. Ask everybody to give you time. If they get mad, let them get mad. Because it's you. Your life can be on the line. And you don't know it. I told that pastor. He said, God sent him to America. I said, man of God, I do not bear witness that God asked you to leave your country, leave your church, and come to America. He said, oh, Pastor Cusy, you, you always see stuff. Now you don't want me to come to America to enjoy. Okay. Other pastors told him God brought him to America. What a disaster of almost five, six years. Disaster. Church disaster. Family disaster. Oh, God, a wreck. And eventually he said, Pastor Jesus, you were right. I should have listened to you. I said, well, it's not late. late. Trevor, you're welcome. So our communion tonight is for clarity of hearing. My sheep hear my voice that would hear clearly. Uh, some of you have had dreams where something, your ears were being cleaned out or stuff removed from your ears. That is a sign that God was literally circumcising your spiritual ears so you can hear clearer, better, stronger, precisely. Hearing is one thing. Doing what you've heard is another thing. You don't know how many people that you are not, you don't know how many times that God has spoken to us. When you spat you welcome. Don't do it. Don't say that. Don't go there. Don't put your money there. Don't do that. Pray now. Get up. Fast now. Go now. Apologize. Make that phone call. Send that money. No, I will not do it. No, I will not do it. No, I will not do it. You and I need help, okay? So we're going to ask the Lord to talk to us in a way we can hear, but also give us the grace to obey. The grace to obey or the grace to wait. To wait. To wait. Wait. Hallelujah. Before we do that, you're not born again. All of this fine teaching will mean nothing, will not work, for God does not talk with sinners. If you're not born again, I want you to say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash me with your blood. I receive you as my Lord and Savior. 
in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for those who pray that prayer that in no wise would you cast them away. Forgive us, forgive their sins, draw them closer to you, reveal yourself to them, and keep every one of us to the last day. In the name of Jesus, and God's people said a big amen, amen, amen. Okay, get your bread. Of course, we use our script, our verse, 1 Corinthians 11, 22, 1 Corinthians 11, 23. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night he was betrayed, what did he do? He gave, when he had given thanks, he break it. He took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it, and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. This do ye in remembrance of me. Father, tonight, the anointing on Jesus' body, as we eat the bread, whatever your people are using as a point of contact tonight, as the flesh of Jesus, please honor it. And we receive it that the anointing in the body of Jesus, Jesus never missed God. And he pleased the Lord that, Father, you will anoint us to hear clearly, to obey, to do it with joy. Don't let us miss you again because it has cost us so much pain financially, spiritually, emotionally, mentally. For missing you and over and over we break that cycle of always going off and ending up in the in just disaster help us today in the name of god the father god the son god the holy spirit you may now eat in jesus name i will talk and minister and eat at the same time after the same manner also he took the cup when he has supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the lost death till he come. Tonight we receive the life in the blood. The Bible says that the life of the flesh is in the blood. There's a life force in the blood of Jesus. Anything dying, Anything dead, anything not clear, any work of the devil, let the blood go and clear it out and give us the life and the life evermore. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Ghost just said to me, there's somebody sick, very sick. And so we also target the blood toward that person's sickness. We rebuke sickness, we rebuke disease, we rebuke infirmity, and we release the stripes of Jesus. Pains are going, aches are going, uh, tormenting dreams are dying. Uh, all kinds of healings are occurring, yes, Ronnie. All kinds of deliverances are occurring for he sent his word and his word healed them and delivered them. I may not have called out your healing. Just say it out loud where you are. I receive my healing. Say it again. I receive my healing. Say it again. I receive my healing in the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I receive my deliverance. I receive my deliverance. Say it one more time. I receive my deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, let it be so. For you promised in Numbers 13 that as we speak into your ears, so shall you do unto us. Thank you, Father. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, you may now drink in Jesus' name. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory and honor in Jesus' mighty name. Father, we rebuke cancer. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke migraine headache. I rebuke arthritis. I rebuke COVID-19. 
I rebuke witchcraft induced sickness. I rebuke premature death. I rebuke strange afflictions and dreams. I rebuke and curse that curse. I break the chains and the evil judgments. I break the evil prayers. I break it in the name of Jesus. I loose you and set you free. In the name of Jesus, your money loosed. That pastor who feels like quitting, throwing in the tower to leave town, the devil is a liar. I command that city to open to you. I break the spell and the enchantment and witchcraft by the blood of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. That woman who has sworn to destroy your home that you see in your dreams. Let the earth open up and swallow them. She and her company. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Knees are being healed. Hips. You woke up with pain in your left hip. Check it. It's gone. Thank you, Lord. Back pain. Gone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Somebody says, I always have weird dreams. Very weird. Terrible dreams. I'm afraid to sleep at night. I rebuke it in the name of Jesus. You will sleep good for he gives his beloved sleep in the name of Jesus. Somebody, they take your jewelry. They've taken some of your underwear. You wake up, underwear disappear. Jewelry disappear. I rebuke that devil. In the name of Jesus. Somebody else says, oh, pastor, I wish I had heard this message a long time ago. Pastor, I've lost so much. Honey, it's not too late. And right now I speak restoration of everything you've lost. Money, opportunities, open doors, connections, relationships, uh, liftings and, and, and uh, bonuses and promotions and uh, destiny helpers, people that forsook you, uh, misunderstandings that drove people, good people away from you. I rebuke that devil and I command your helpers to return. Expect that phone call again. Expect that email. Somebody, you put an, in an application for approval. Somebody, I don't know if it's a loan or grant, or job, or something, but honey, they will sign it, you will sign it, they will give it to you, I'm trying to close, they will sign it, you will sign it, they will give it to you. I see approved, stamped from heaven. Pastor, when do you see that? <laughs> Would you like to work for a boss that you can't hear from? <laughs> You're asking me when I hear. Well, who told me that? Well, did, you didn't tell me. God must have told me. Would you like to work for a, for somebody and you don't hear from him? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. I see somebody, you, you want to get into a business, but you don't have the money. I see somebody giving you the money to enough to get you into that business. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Receive it, whoever you are. Thank you, Father. Blessed be the name of the Lord. There's somebody watching. You're going to be invited to attend a funeral. You, 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 there's an, I see an invitation to a funeral. The Lord said, don't go. You've been feeling funny that you shouldn't go. Don't disobey. Don't miss it now. Just tell them you cannot go. Do not go. I don't know who you are, but that's what I feel. I believe God is, you know how we are, how we roll here. <laughs> if you know me long enough, you know that I, do, I am not a careless talker. Praise the Lord. To him be the glory. Thank you, Father. There's somebody with uh, strength thirst, always thirsty. The Lord is healing it. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Okay, somebody's writing on Facebook and say, I didn't go. Obviously, there was somebody that had died and so on. Get ready. I, I see approvals, a lot of approvals. 
in this season. Thank you, Lord. There is somebody, God is speaking to you to send a seed. I don't know who you are, to sow a seed. I, honestly, please, I'm not here to raise money. If I am hungry, I'll tell people at Glory House and thank God that they're wonderful people. I don't know where God is telling you to send that seed, a money seed to your church or pastor or wherever. You better obey that the Lord will bless you. All of you on Facebook, I want you to celebrate my sister and my friend Esther, Esther Iyang. Esther was watching today. I cannot thank God for her enough. Those on Facebook, Periscope, there she is, Esther Iyang. Thank you. Esther Iyang, my sister, I've known her for a long time. And uh, thank God for you. She was the one, Ijelmai Kudazi, and all of you on Facebook, she was the one that wrote the letter of invitation that brought me to the United States. Derry, Minister Derry, you're welcome. So thank all of you, Scarlett, all of you. Thank Esther, lovely lady, and happy birthday to you. And they're greeting you there on Periscope. Please, all of you on Facebook, thank God for her. She, she's family, okay? And I told her, everywhere and anywhere I am blessed, she has a share in that blessing, okay? They're thanking you there. Beautiful lady. If you see her, she looks 30. Beautiful lady. Her sons are taller than her, though. I don't know where she gave them. Too much cheese. <laughs> Greet your husband and family. And uh, thanks to all of you for watching. Let me know if I've blessed you, if this makes sense to you, okay? I hope uh, you were able to get a nugget or two to help you as you go along the journey of life. Don't forget, life is not a race. It's a marathon. See, so they're thanking you, Esther. Life is a race, is a marathon. It's not a race. See? Life. Mm -hmm. Life is a marathon. It's not a race. Elizabeth, you should meet Esther. She's your kind of person. And Esther, we need you to come to Glory House. Come to Atlanta one of these days. Let's just host you and show you to command your day, folks. Okay? Bring your husband. Bring everybody. You need to rewatch. If you need to replay this message, please do so. Please do so. Take uh, notes, Jenna. Thank you so much. Take notes. Share it with your group. Please, all those watching on Facebook, share again before we go. Share again. Dr. Glenn, I don't know if you're still there. We appreciate you. Share again before you go on Facebook. Just share it. Somebody will get a notification and jump in. Life is a marathon, not a race. Do not think that life is a race. Take it easy. You say marathon is a long race. Peace yourself well. And I pray that God will sustain us and help us to the end. In the name of Jesus. I celebrate you. I am so happy. I don't know. I woke up this morning with a song. Please, you've got to come, Esther. Please, please, please. Just flying on a Saturday, worship with us on Sunday. And uh, we pray. Oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father, we curse the spirit of COVID-19. We curse the spirit of COVID-19. We ask for your mercy that that thing will be lifted off of the earth. We speak healing to the nations. We speak healing to the cities. We speak healing to people afflicted, bound now. Enough bloodshed, enough death. We rebuke this counsel of the enemy. COVID-19 is not of God. In the name of Jesus, we break the spirit of sudden death and premature death. In the name of Jesus, and I want you to say amen to this, Peter, welcome. We rebuke that spirit. It will not come near our homes. 
It will not come near our children. It will not come near our loved ones. Nelly, that beautiful daughter of yours, God will keep her and keep you, Esther, all of you. God will keep us, protect us with a wall of fire round about us. And in the midst of us, he'll be our strength. In the name of Jesus, we rebuke the spirit of death and sudden death, hospital mismanagement, chronic sicknesses, black people's sicknesses, white people's sicknesses. We rebuke the spirit and we command confusion into the camp of those who are profiting the satanic demonic networks that have kept the earth in the grip of this thing in the name of Jesus. And we pray that any vaccine, any medication they bring out will be by the approval of heaven. It shall be no any other thing but just to cure people. No demonic satanic implantation and implants in the body of God's people. In the name of Jesus, we speak safety over our children again and over their teachers as they return to school for those going off. In the name of Jesus, death, we tell you, you will not have any of our loved ones. The blood of Jesus is against you. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we speak fearlessness and boldness to those who have to go to work in this condition or fly or go out there on a daily basis, regular basis, weekly basis. Father, we speak a shield of protection and safety over them in the name of Jesus. I just saw a patient on a sick bed, white bed, as I was speaking. The patient just coughed and came back to life. Father, thank you for that resurrection. And we speak a recovery of lost ground. Father, we pray for many who have lost jobs, houses, cars, husbands, children, loved ones during this terrible pandemic, five going to six months now. Let the blood of Jesus war for, for us in the name of Jesus. And God's people said, amen. I'm going to be posting uh, how to pray for your children after immediately after this broadcast. I'm going to put it on Facebook, on that page, on the Facebook, on um, where's that Facebook page where we put stuff so you can go and see it. Heal Our Land page. Heal Our Land page on Facebook. You will see my picture. You go to Facebook, Heal Our Land a page on Facebook, and I'm going to post how to pray for your children on it, because some of you don't know how to pray for your children. Even if they are not with you or your grandmother or somebody, get their picture and always stick it on the wall where you can lay hands on it, and uh, I pray that it will bless you. Let me know if uh, any which way we can serve you. We're here to serve you, okay? And to be a blessing to you. Father, bless that person you spoke to to sow that seed. Whoever the person is, honor their obedience today in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Thanks for allowing me to take extra time. And God bless you. Don't forget, it's not over. Until you win. Yes, thank you. Somebody saying happy birthday in advance. Thank you. Uh, happy birthday to me, August the 19th. Okay. And let me see what day is August the 19th, by the way. August the 19th is next week, Wednesday. So we're going to have command your day, birthday next week, Wednesday. Command your day, birthday, celebration, what have you broadcast. Okay. Thank you for being friends, and I'll see you tomorrow. It's not over until you win. Bye-bye. Thank you, Lord.